Greetings from Bethel Memorial Baptist Church. It's another Wednesday night, and we had 11 people online praying. We also had Inferno Student Ministries meeting here with Pastor Matthew and his wife, Aletheia, and the other helpers. Uh, they were having a good time as well. Um, shared a devotional tonight really about prayer. I always call our Wednesday night time in the word a prayer challenge because it's good to focus on who God is, but this particularly is about prayer. My devotions this past week had a number of days that just focused on different aspects of prayer, whether it was from the daily bread or from uh, some of the videos I watched and just some of the reading that the Lord led me to read. And I want to share that, but let me pray first before we look into that. Father, I thank you. I thank you for the privilege of prayer, the privilege that we had in prayer meeting to pray with brothers and sisters in the Lord. I, I thank you that uh, the encouragement that we can have as we pray together. I pray that we would recognize that what prayer really, really is, it's connecting ourselves with you, connecting our hearts with your heart so that we learn how to pray and what to pray. And, and uh, even then we need to accept your sovereign answers to our prayer. And not just the, the yes or the no, but the timing of those answers. I pray that you would bless. Bless us to know you. and Bless us to, to trust you. And I pray that you'll bless us as we look at these verses together. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Let anyone who is thirsty come to me and drink. John 7, 37. Do you ever have thirsty prayers? Prayers where you know that you have a great need, and you have to turn to the Lord. Jesus spoke these words during the festival of Sukkot, the Feast of the Tabernacles, the celebration, remember it? The Feast of the Tabernacles was celebrating the God's provision and leading the people through the 40 years in the wilderness and preparing for them. It was the, the tabernacles. They would live in temporary shelters, and to celebrate that, they so to celebrate that, they would wear live in these shelters, uh, temporary shelters uh, for a week and just remember that. But it was a, a thinking about how God provided both food and drink. And at the perfect time, Jesus stood up in the middle of that celebration and said, let anyone who is thirsty come to me and drink. I think about what makes me thirsty when there's a great need, when there's a great concern, when there's just a, a sense of recognizing that the things of this world do not satisfy. I will call that a thirsty prayer. But then another day I looked at this story about Moses. If you remember Moses striking the rock a second time, and we'll explain that here in a moment. Let me read Mo Numbers 20, 10 through 12. And Moses said to them, hear now, you rebels, shall we bring water for you out of this rock? And Moses lifted up his hand and struck the rock with his staff twice, and water came out abundantly. And the congregation drank and their livestock. And the Lord said to Moses, because you did not uphold me as holy in the eyes of the people of Israel, therefore you shall not bring this assembly into the land that I have given them. Now, just the backstory: In the book of Exodus, shortly after they came out of Egypt, Moses was in uh, Rephidim. And the people were without water. This was a place, I think, that you knew that there'd be water problems. And they cried out to Moses, why did you bring us out here to die of thirst? And Moses cried out to God, and God said, I want you to take the staff that you had in Egypt, that you had before Pharaoh, take the staff, and I will show you a rock, and you are to hit the rock, and water will come forth from that rock. That's a great story. It's a great story. That was at the beginning of the uh, time out of Egypt. And Moses remembered that. But what's happening here in Numbers, this is 40 years later. Remember, they went up to Kadesh to see if how they were going to attack. And they sent the spies into the land. The spies came back and said, we can't do it. We can't do it. God said, I know you can't do it, but I can. But they didn't believe. And God said, okay. To the wilderness you will go for 40 years. One big, long funeral procession as people died in that wilderness. Well, now the, the, the generation has passed. Now the young people are there. And they came back to Kadesh. And this is where this happened. But I want you to know, the beginning of Numbers 20 tells us something that you might overlook. Miriam, Moses' sister, died. And they buried her. 
Sometimes a great loss in our life makes us very thirsty. Sometimes problems, because when they got to Kadesh, they expected water. Normally there was water there, but this time there was no water. There's drought or whatever the conditions, there was no water. And the people were all the more saddened by this. We're supposed to have water here. Why don't we have water? And they again cried out to Moses. And Moses is thinking, we are just about to go into the promised land. Been waiting 40 years for this. And we have this problem. And he again goes to the Lord. But here God says, I want you to speak to the rock. Now let's look and see what I just read and what, what the problem is here. He goes and he calls the people rebels. He has an attitude. And then he says, shall we bring water for you out of this rock? Ah, you're, you're equating yourself with whom? I remember teaching many times about Moses and how Moses is the meekest or the most humble man. And I said, I don't know why that's a problem because if I took a stick and waved it in front of a body of water and the water opened up so I could walk across on dry land, I would have no sense of believing that I did that. I would know it's the Lord. But this is 40 years, 40 years of struggle with these people. And he remembers hitting the rock the first time. And he kind of muscle memory. No, I don't know what, just his attitude, claiming that he's doing it with God. Moses lifted up his hand and struck the rock. And it wasn't just one tap. He struck it twice. And then water came out abundantly. That's the thing. Moses didn't do it the way he was told, but God still brought the blessing. The blessing of water. And it was abundant water. The congregation, all the people drank, and there was plenty of water there for their livestock as well. See, sometimes when we pray, and we're praying in a, non-reverent way in a way that doesn't please the lord he may still answer our prayer but there's something wrong and i don't know how long it took between verse 11 and verse 12 the lord said to moses because you did not uphold me as holy in the eyes of the people of israel therefore you shall not bring this assembly into the land i have given them no i've waited 40 years to enter into this promised land i've waited for this and you're saying because I had a little bit of an attitude and I struck the rock twice instead of speaking to it. I don't know if he had it. I think he might have been convicted immediately and realized it's what I deserve. Who am I to think that I can provide water? Who am I that I can treat God's people in a way that he is more patient with them? Who am I? And he was not granted to go into the promised land. So many prayer meetings that I said, ah, but Moses did go to the promised land on the Mount of Trans Transfiguration when Jesus and Moses and Elijah were there. Moses was able to stand on that mountain with Jesus for a moment. And that, that just was, was kind of a fun. But getting back to prayer, we can come and drink if we're thirsty. But Moses, the story of Moses says, be careful in your thirsty prayers. Make sure you're Honoring God as God. And I, I, James 5, 13 was another verse in my prayers this week. If, is anyone among you in trouble? Let them pray. Is anyone happy? Let them sing songs of praise. We had a number of praise items in the prayer sheet tonight. And it was just a blessing to, to praise the Lord for them. But I love this prescription that if you're in trouble, you should pray. And if you're happy, you should praise. In other words, you should pray without ceasing. That you should find time and take the time to go to the Lord in prayer. But again, remember Moses' example, do it reverently. I know there are times when I'm thirsty, when I'm a little bit not happy, and I go to the Lord in prayer and I'm not reverent. This passage about Moses makes me think. I want to be one who knows to come to the Lord when I'm thirsty. I want to know that when i in trouble, I can pray. I want to know when I'm happy, I can sing songs of praise. But I need to be reverent when I do it. And one other thing I need, when you think about what James says, couple it with Psalm 24, 17, 27, 14. Wait for the Lord. Be strong and take heart and wait for the Lord. In my prayer time, God is in no way bound to my timetable. Most of my frustrations 
in my prayer life come by trying to hold God to my timetable. God may not answer the prayer the way I want him to answer it, but he will answer it. He may not answer it many times at all in the timetable that I want him to answer it, but he will answer it. And as I'm waiting for the Lord, I all of a sudden realize the thing I'm praying for should not be too important. Now, somebody else in prayer meeting that I said, maybe Moses was starting to worship the God of entering into the promised land instead of worshiping the God that he had grown so close to. Sometimes when we get what we want, it takes us farther away from God and not to God. Just a lot of things in these verses that I wanted to share tonight. I encourage you, admit your thirst before God. Even if you're angry about your thirst, be careful, be reverent. As a person who struggles with anger, I know my prayers are not always in the reverent form. God still wants me to pray, and I still may get the water that I'm praying for, but there will be consequences if I don't treat him as holy. Let me close in prayer. Father, I thank you. I pray for each one that hears this tonight, that they would think about their thirst and how you want to meet the need for their thirst, how you're going to meet the need in your way and in your timing. Help us to learn the message of Moses that just because we're having a bad time, saddened at the, the loss of a loved one, saddened at the, the struggles that have been going on for 40 years, saddened and just downright angry, frustrated, we should still treat you as holy and listen to what you say about how we should approach you. I thank you for the grace of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who took the penalty for all of our sins. So this isn't about being judged for sin. It's about losing the blessings that truly can be ours by failing to be reverent. Help us, Lord. Help us to wait upon you, to pray when we're in need and to praise when we're happy. Help us to know you because of the time we spend with you in prayer. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. God bless.